Violent clashes between Israeli troops and Palestinians have spread across much of the occupied West Bank following days of hostility in Gaza. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has warned that Israel's biggest offensive against Hamas in Gaza in years is not over yet. It's estimated that 10,000 Palestinians have had to leave their homes to flee the Israeli bombardment. Rockets were fired by militants towards Israel from the territory for a fifth day. At least 122 people in Gaza have been killed and nine have died in Israel since the fighting began on Monday. From Jerusalem, here's our Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen. The sectarian crisis that nobody expected is deepening. Tonight, Arab protesters are on the streets of northern Israel. This was Nazareth. Israel's Arab citizens have forced themselves back into the wider conflict that includes Gaza and Jerusalem. It's ugly and angry in towns shared by Jews and Arabs. Violence between citizens could be a bigger crisis for Israel than Gaza. This was a burnt out Jewish school. Police broke down the door of a Mahmoud family in Haifa. They deny accusations their sons were attacking Jews. The police say their officers behaved correctly. The father, Sheikh Awad, the imam of a mosque, and his two sons were arrested for attacking police officers. The woman who filmed this said they're scared not of Jews, but of racist police. A local rabbi visited, she said, to apologize. In Gaza, they buried 13-year-old Mahmoud Tolba. He was hit during an Israeli airstrike while he waited for a new haircut to celebrate the end of Ramadan. Half of Gaza's two million Palestinians are children. This is Mahmoud's brother. In the occupied territories and in Israel, events this week have exposed once again the mutual hatred and fear that are the essence of this conflict. This was Hebron during a day of protests on the occupied West Bank. More Palestinians were killed. In Jerusalem, Palestinians pelted Jewish settlers with stones and fireworks. The settlers hit back with live bullets. This was Sheikh Jarrah, where attempts to evict Palestinians from their homes helped start the escalation to war. The conflict crosses borders. In Jordan, the country next door, security forces kept protesters back from the frontier. Palestinians make up more than half the Jordanian population, mostly refugees from past wars not permitted to return by Israel. History never dies in this conflict. People do. It's now a multifaceted conflict on multiple fronts, and that, of course, makes it much harder for diplomatic mediation, which is going on behind the scenes, to try to get some sort of a ceasefire in Gaza. Now, as for the sectarian crisis inside Israel itself, you know, that might be harder for them to deal with, harder for them to find a solution. Community leaders, religious leaders, the president of Israel, they've all been appealing for calm, uh, Muslims, Palestinians, Jews have been getting together inside Israel and appealing to different communities to, to stop the madness that's going on, as they've called it. But, you know, people aren't really listening. And this week coming for Palestinians is a very significant weekend, I should say, that's coming up. And that's the, uh, the weekend that marks the so-called Nakba, what they call their catastrophe, which was the independence of Israel in 1948 and the, the dissolution of Palestinian society. And that is always a rough time. There are always clashes, there's always violence. And in this current atmosphere, of course, there are a lot of worried people. Jeremy, thank you. Jeremy Bowen there.